Looks like that. Perfect. I think we're all there. I don't oh. like that word. Tangent? No. Trig? Oh. Well, so we were finding side lengths of right triangles using special right triangles. And now today it doesn't matter what kind of triangle we have. As long as it's right, we can find missing side lengths of it. So have you guys heard of trig before? Mm -hmm. Does anyone know what it is? Travel. Travel, yes. No. The study of... It's calculus, but for geometry. No, it's not that bad. It's the study of triangle angle and side measures. So we can use trig to help us find missing angle measures and sides in right triangles. And the best part is someone much smarter than us a long time ago programmed your calculator to do all the hard math, we just have to type it in right. Other than that, it's pretty easy. Let's use your calculator. You know those buttons that say like tan, sin, and cos on your calculator? Do you guys see those? Tan, T-A-N, sine, S-I-N. We had to finally use those buttons that we've seen before and have been able to use. So that's what we're gonna do for the next week. Oh, are we getting in the uh, sine, cosine, and tangent? Yes, exactly. It's not so bad. It is not so bad. Okay, let's talk about this tangent ratio. So remember, a ratio, you're just comparing two things, something over something, right? And for the tangent ratio, we're comparing your opposite leg over your adjacent leg. Like, what are you talking about? So what happens is we're looking at angle A. Do you guys see how it says tangent of A? Mm -hmm. So I know I'm going from angle A. So first off, you got to mark your angle like this. That's how you know where you're going from. It's your reference angle. And now we label our sides. Let's start with the easiest one. What side is your hypotenuse? 13. Yep, so just put an H or height for hypotenuse, whatever you want to write. And then we have two other legs. You have an opposite leg and an adjacent. Your opposite leg is on the whole other side of your triangle. It's on the opposite side. So five would be your opposite. And then your adjacent is right next to your angle. Now once you've labeled your triangle, this part's easy. So your tangent is your opposite leg over your adjacent leg. What did we label as our opposite leg? Five. And what's our adjacent? Twelve. Done. That's all they wanted. Five over twelve. It's a complicated equation. Just five over twelve. Just five over twelve. That's they just wanted it. Well, can we reduce five over twelve? No. No, that's it. We're done. They just wanted it as a fraction. Is that okay? Maybe. That was it. Okay. Let's try another one. We're not going to do that. We'll do this one, though. To find the tangent of angle S, write it as a fraction, and then as a decimal to four decimal places. So we're starting at angle S. So mark your angle S. Now we have to label our sides. Start with the easy one. Which one's your hypotenuse? Ten. Ten. Opposite is six. Perfect. That's amazing. Nailed it. So now we can write tangent of S equals. Now what is your ratio? Six over eight. Six over eight. Now, the only thing is, can we reduce 6 over 8? Yes. Yeah, 2 goes into both of them, right? 3 over 4. 
Yeah, now it says write it as a decimal. So now you just type in 3 divided by 4 in your calculator and let's see what we get. 0 0.75. Done, folks. Can you get a head start on the next one? Then we can compare. Same process, just different numbers. Yep, so it's four, one, six, seven. Yep, so it wants it to four decimal places. Are we close? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, we're okay. Did you do six? Oh, that's okay. As long as you have at least two, you should be okay. Okay, perfect. Let's flip the page and see what's next. So we can use our calculator to approximate the tangent of an angle. So it says use your calculator to approximate what this would be to four decimal places. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to hit tangent and then the number. Yeah. Okay, if you don't get this, when you type this one in, wave me over to your calculator, it's probably in a different mode. Tangent of 35, dear. Yep. Yep, that's it. Then do the other ones. If you're not getting the same answer on that first one, wave me over. Your calculator might be in a different mode. <laughs> Let's go. We're killing that. We match. Yeah. Okay, here comes the fun part. We're going to use this ratio to help us find a missing side in our triangle, okay? So, process starts off the same way. You have to mark the angle they give us. Do you guys see how we're only given this angle here? So, that's, we know that's our reference angle. So, mark it like this. And now we have to label the sides that they have given to us. So what is x with respect to 60? What side would this be? Opposite. Opposite. Yep. And what would 20 be? Adjacent. So we just labeled our sides. That's all we did. We haven't done anything else yet. We just labeled our sides. Isn't the long way adjacent? Nope, the adjacent one is just always next to the angle you mark. Oh. Yep. It might be the long side or the short one. It doesn't really matter. So now we can write the tangent. And what's our angle measure? 60. 60 equals, now we want our tangent ratio. 
So it's our opposite leg over our adjacent. So what would that be? X over 20. Now this looks gross, but it's not. Let's get this as a decimal. What is the tangent of 60 in your calculator? 1.732. Yep. Equals x over 20. And then our last step, how do you undo divide by 20? Multiply. Multiply by 20. So you're going to take 20 times both sides. How do I times x? Well, because look, these will go away. So now you're just left with x over here. So now we have to figure out what 20 times 1.732 is. Yes. Yeah. 34.6? Six four. Okay. There we go. Yeah, it's not so bad. Uh, how do you know which one is mine? So you should I show you the next one? Yeah. Okay. We'll make sure everyone gets this down and we'll try the next one. Okay, so again, you start by marking your angle. So you see how we're only given this angle? So that's your reference angle, so mark 34. Now we have to label our sides. So which ones are, what's X? Opposite. Opposite. And what's 7? Yep. So now we can write tangent of 34. Yep, x over 7. Now do you guys remember what to do? Yeah, 0.6. Type in tangent 34. I think that's what it is. Yep. And then how do we undo divide by seven? Multiply. Multiply. Four, three, seven, two, one, five, six, four, five. Four, so four point two. Is that fine? 4.72. Okay. Equals X. Okay, the bottom two are similar, but they're just a teeny bit different. They start off the same way though, okay? So again, we're going to start by marking our angle. What's our angle that we're given? 55. Label our side. So what's x with respect to 55? Adjacent. And 18 is? Opposite. So now we can write our equation. Tangent of 55 equals? One point four two eight. Oh, before before that, dear, what did you, what did you put out for this side? Oh. Eighteen over. X. Eighteen over X. Yeah, but now we can figure out what that tangent of fifty five is. One point four two eight one, right? Yeah. Now here's where it's different. Where is our variable on this one? On the bottom. It's okay. So we just have to fix it a little bit. How do I undo divide by x? Multiply. So the times both sides by x. So then we'll have 1.4281x equals, those are going to cancel, yep. So it equals 18. Now, how are you going to get x by itself over there? Divide by, by yep. 1.4 to be 1. Exactly. I used to divide by this decimal. 
So always your opposite goes on the top. Yes. Yep. Okay, you guys get a head start on the next one. Same type of problem that we just did, just different numbers. Where are we close? Yep. Uh, so do you only want like one after the decimal? Yeah, when you give like your final answer, just one decimal place is okay. If you want to give more, that's okay too. That's not wrong. Definitely not wrong. So if it's like twelve over five, would you be wrong with the seven? Yeah. Okay. Let's find our homework pack and we'll get started on this worksheet together. It's this bright, totally pink one. This tangent ratio on it. It looks like a lot, it's not. A pinky promise. A pinky promise. Absolutely, sir. Nope, uh, let me try to put that purple one. Or maybe two in front of the purple one. A few in front of the purple one. Let's skip the first three. Yeah, but you guys can cross off the first three. I like the second three better. I like the second three better. So number four, write the tangent of the angle as a fraction in simplest form and as a decimal to four decimal places. So we're going from angle P. So if you remember, mark your angle P. Now we got to label our sides. Okay, what's 25? Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. What's seven? Up. Up. And what is 24? Adjacent. So if we want the tangent, what two legs are we using? Opposite, Opposite and adjacent, so 7 over 24. Can, yeah, can we reduce 7 over 24? No. Nope, but now we want it as a decimal. So that's 7 divided by 24. Should we go 1, 7 if we round? Okay. 
Dang it. Okay, I'll let you guys do five and six on your own. Same thing. Seven through 14, you guys, you're just typing these in your calculator. So like number seven, tangent of 25, you just type it in. Are you okay to work? Do you want to do any on the bottom, the very bottom together? Are you looking for a missing side? Okay, let me know if you need me. Oh, it's Ray. It's Ray? It's a 0 0.75. Where's the F15? Oh, because that's it. You're done. You're already just done. Yep.